Today marks the beginning of a new journey at the farm with the spray drone here behind me. We'll get our door closed up here on our storage container. It's been over two months since I've had this drone trailer out of the shed and to be honest I've never actually ran water or chemical or anything through it so today will not only be a test of the drone but it's also going to be a test of the trailer and my craftsmanship on how well I did making sure everything was tight and fit on everything on the trailer itself. I am a little bit worried on how this whole season will go but that's why I'm starting early making sure everything's going to work on the trailer and the drone so we'll get it pulled out and then we'll get started for day number one. While the water's filling on those tanks, we'll come back inside the shed, we'll grab the drone. <sighs> the drone's all strapped in now. We don't want this to get loose inside this storage container. I have the batteries out, have all the batteries sitting over here. These three, are, these are the chargers. These are what are gonna be charging the batteries when we get out to the field. And then these are just the batteries that'll go in the drone as well as fully charged batteries so that way we don't have to wait for things to get charged. While I wait for just a little bit more water, we'll come up here into this building and we'll grab the chemical we're gonna be spraying today. Here's that product I was talking about. It is called Aero Blitz from the Andersons. This is a stress reliever full of a bunch of micronutrients like iron, zinc, boron, manganese, basically it's supposed to help relieve some of that crop stress when the temperatures are high 80s, high 90 degrees like we're gonna have this next week. So we'll get some of these loaded up into the truck because that's what we'll be spraying to my cornfield today. I have about 200 gallons of water in this tank. I need another 100 gallons. We need like 300, 350 gallons to go over there. Then we'll have enough water. But while we're waiting for the water to fill, I figure might as well get the generator going, start getting the air conditioning going inside of our big storage container, make sure all the batteries are gonna charge because I wanna make sure we don't get out to the field and then have to turn right back around. Kick the power switch on. We have the fuel set to gasoline, not propane. We have all of our switches on I believe we'll hit the start and see now let's head inside the shack here and see if everything's working since we have power to it the air conditioner I don't know why this isn't working but yes I have this all air conditioned that way the batteries will charge more efficiently and they won't overheat also if it's a really hot day I can come in here and then all of our batteries down here are these charging? And it looks like they are not. It's showing we're not using any power out of the generator yet, and I don't know why that is, because everything's hooked up. I remembered, for these batteries to charge, they all need to be turned on, because that is what powers this little water station that forces water through them, that way they don't overheat. So, now it's working like we thought. Set the air conditioner down to 60, as low as it goes. This is getting started. I'm starting to feel a little bit of cold breeze coming through. We could have a good day here yet. This is the exhaust fan for the air conditioner inside there. Actually makes a pretty good fan just to cool off a little bit. We're gonna call that good enough on the water because I'm starting to get anxious. I wanna head out there and fly. Next stop, the field will be flying. Made it here safe and sound on the trailer since this is the first time taking it down the road and it looks like everything did. To get filled up with our chemical, I need this little remote control here. I'll show you what that does in a minute, but I can definitely feel the air conditioners kicking in in the container, which I'm liking. Now if I hit this button, the water's gonna flow out of this tank, through this tube, through the pump, and we're gonna start filling our cone tank, and it might be able to see it, there it goes. It's starting to fill the tank. I have this motor run through a wireless switch. It's pretty slick, actually. 
Now we'll circulate the chemical a little bit. So we'll open that up, turn the pump on. That way we get everything nice and mixed up. All we're doing is taking it out of the bottom, dumping back in the top. That way it'll all be agitated before we put it in the drone. I didn't fill it all the way full, mostly because this is my first time. And that's a lot of weight that that thing loads on chemicals. So we'll send it up in the air and fingers crossed it doesn't come back until it meets us here. Flight number one, and for some reason, none of the chemical came out of the tank. I don't know why it went all the way to the other end of the field and came back, so we'll load up some more batteries and give flight number two hopefully a better try. And here we go with flight number two. Hopefully this one actually disperses some of the chemical. It's looking a lot more promising on this screen. It's showing up in the top corner, 14.1 gallons. Well, I don't know, 14 gallons, 13.9. So it must be dispensing chemical. I can look at the cameras here. There's the camera that's looking forward of the drone. Here's the camera that's looking straight down at the crop. We're cruising along at a brisk 20 mile an hour here. Here comes the drone around for round number three of this field. You can barely see the chemical droplets it's spraying, but it is. Now that it seems like I got the hang of it, the drone's out in the field flying, and it's fully autonomous. I don't need to do anything here on the remote other than just monitor, make sure things are working. So I'm here changing batteries, making sure we get all the batteries charged so when the drone lands, and eventually we'll need to refill with some more chemicals. go with flight number three seems like we're slowly getting faster and faster which that's the goal is to become super efficient changing batteries refilling I'm gonna back up as the flights in operation the blue lines are all the passes the coverage we've already made the yellows everything we still have yet to apply with all the metrics on top telling us everything that's going on with the drone the technology in this drone absolutely amazes me. I don't even need to hold the controller here. The drone will land itself because I have RTK in the exact same spot. Watch. Eat that slick. I've gotten a good system down now where I've become really efficient, or at least what I think is pretty efficient. So my goal is 40 acres an hour. It's currently 3.13 in the afternoon. I have 80 acres left to go on this field. I had to split it into two separate fields because I kind of screwed up at the beginning. So now we have 80 acres left to go. I'm hoping to do 40 acres per hour. We still need to get some more chemical. I got water loading into the tank right here. So let's see if we can get this done by 5.13. Then I'll be impressed. I'll be proud of myself for day one of spraying. It's time to put some more chemical in the cone. And we'll take off for another operation. I will say I added air conditioning to the storage container. All right, I got the drone about to take off and I don't know if I'm gonna use it. At the time, it seemed like a smart idea. It wasn't that costly of an investment, but so far, this is like the only way to stand in the shade. So I turned off the air conditioner and I'm just standing here with the door open. And there goes the drone again. One really nice thing about this drone is now that I have this side of the field finished, there's absolutely no sense in staying parked over here, I'm better off moving to the other side of the field, landing the drone somewhere over there. That way I don't have to transit and spend so much time going back and forth. So I can actually hop in the truck, move the trailer and the truck all the way down to the other end of the field and the drone's fine right now. And I can have it return to a new home point way down there 
That way it's just closer. We don't have to spend as much battery transiting across the field. It's a little trickier over here now because the telephone pole and the wires are overhead. So I'm not gonna be able to take off in this driveway because I don't wanna get too close to those telephone wires. So I think the best plan of strategy is land right here behind the trailer. It should be a safe spot. No one going on the road should hit it. So once we run out of chemical, we'll land it right back here. It's now 4.15 in the last hour I learned one trick. When I put a new battery in, start the drone up right away because if I don't, then the drone kills itself. It has an internal battery that lasts, it must be for like two minutes. And if I don't start the new battery right away, then I need to reacquire GPS signal. It takes me an extra five minutes. So definitely need to make sure I start the batteries right away when I put them in the drone because I'm sick of waiting here for GPS signal. Feels like a John Deere thing kind of. drone actually goes back and it fills in any of the spots that it misses so when it runs out of chemical let's say it stops here it comes back to the trailer I refill it with chemical well to be as efficient as possible it starts another full length pass because rather than going all the way down to the end when it's completely full it just makes sense to start another full pass so now before it's done it's filling in all the little passes where it ran out of chemical prior and I gotta be honest I am very impressed by that so our coverage on this 160 acre field will be 100% once that drone comes back here in just a couple minutes. The drone just landed for the final time. Let's see what the time is. I was hoping to do 40 acres an hour. I started with the last 80 acres at 313. It is now 518, which means it took me just over two hours, five minutes to complete 80 acres, which I gotta say for day one of spraying, I'm impressed because my goal is to slowly get up to 50 acres per hour, currently at 40 acres per hour. I see some things I can improve on the trailer to become more efficient, but it's super hot out so let's get this thing packed up. We can talk about that when we're back at the farm. One of the things I need to get taken care of relates to these batteries. So for some reason, this battery right here doesn't take a charge and when I put it in the drone, it doesn't obviously run the drone. And I contacted the guys from Tenacity Ag today, they were super good, they said yep. Bring that battery up to our shop. We'll test it. If not, we'll give you a new one. So one of the things I need to get done is I need to get a new battery. That way I have eight total and I won't ever have to be stopping, waiting for batteries to charge. Another thing I want to do is I have fresh water in those tanks right here and I want to wash down the drone and clean it out at the fields. And I have this little hose and nozzle right here, but for some reason, every time I run the pump and only have that coming out, it shuts off the pump because I think the pump is just starting to not have enough pressure that it wants to shoot out. So I need to find a better way to clean out the drone at the end of the day because today we'll just take it back to the farm. But ideally, I could clean it out here in the fields. I designed the trailer with everything I thought I would want. And then I kind of came out here early in the season today thinking, okay, if there's anything I need to change or want to add, now is kind of the time to figure it out because fungicide season, spraying season is, is coming quick. I'm also trying to think of a way I could still use the air conditioner in here. Obviously today it was only like 80 degrees, but there's gonna be days this summer where it's gonna be 100, 105 degrees and I am not gonna want these things sitting out here. And honestly, I'm gonna wanna be in the air conditioning a little bit too. So I'm trying to think of a way, maybe cut a window in one of these. I don't know, I haven't thought of it entirely, but something else will change on this container as well. That way the air conditioning will work more optimally rather than just keep opening the doors. So I need to think of a better way to stage that. Another thing I need to improve is, as you saw, I carry the full chemical jugs from the back of the truck, then dump them into this cone where I add the water. Is it efficient? Yes. Could it be better? Also yes. What I'm thinking is if I get like a 20 gallon cone exactly like this and then I dump all the chemical into that cone, force it into this cone, I mean I could get pretty efficient. But I don't know, if I can find a cheap cone on Facebook Marketplace, that might happen. I now need to head back to the farm and rinse out the drone. 
That way the chemical doesn't build up inside and make everything sticky overnight. But if you guys have any questions about drone operations or anything you want to see, I'm going to be flying this drone for a good portion of the summer. So let me know down below in the comments. And with that, that's all I got for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next one.